APS Superintendent Luis Valentino resigned this week. Dr. Valentino was on the job just two months. We talked about the many details of the APS scandal last week, including his deputy superintendent, Jason Martinez, who was facing felony charges related to inappropriate contact with two children under the age of 13. Jason Martinez is back in Denver where those charges were filed. Now, let's focus on Valentino's resignation. I'm joined at the table today by Dan Foley, former New Mexico House Minority Whip, Sophie Martin, an attorney and editor with DukeCityFix.com. Laura sanchez Reve is here. She's with Sanchez Legal Solutions. And Rob Nikoleski is back with Watchdog.org. Now, Daniel, last week, Dr. Valentino was saying he would not resign. We, we mused here at the table. Maybe it was a negotiating tactic. You never know what the case may be. In, your, in the, your gut sense of this, since we don't know what happened in the school board meeting, no one's privy to know what happened in those uh, uh, closed-door sessions, do you think his hand was forced? What, what, what do you think was driven by his idea to resign after saying he wasn't? You know, I, I, I don't know the man. I never met him. Mm -hmm. um, got to read a little bit about him, obviously a lot lately, but a little right. bit about when he got the job. <laughs> you know, I, I think hopefully what he realized was it was a no-win situation. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he kind of picked a fight with HR. That didn't work well for him. Um, I think he probably lost the confidence of the people that were here. Mm -hmm. Um, the community was clearly looking at the hire he made and was like, wait a minute, your number one right-hand guy right. is under indictment for sexually abusing children in Colorado. I mean, you know, not that it would be acceptable that it happened anywhere. Sure. It's one thing if you tell him it happened in Rhode Island, and I don't know who to, we were talking six sure. hours up the sure. road. I mean, the guy, the guy was literally six hours up the road doing this. Mm -hmm. And I think he just looked at this and realized that he can't win this battle. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if all of this stuff turns out that he went through the right process. He did everything that he says he should have done um, at the end of the day. And we kind of heard that from some of the school board members. There's been some that basically have said, look, you know, we, we had to reach this agreement because we don't know if we could have fired him. We don't know That's if we right. really had cause to fire him. So right. I think he realized he had no ability to lead the district anymore. That's right. Laura, you know, I appreciate Dan's last point there. It was complicated. You know, he's a school superintendent. You can't just bum rush him out the door like a janitor. You can't do that to a janitor anymore, as a matter of fact. So there was a negotiation process, certainly. And I have to think, and I'm wondering if you're in agreement with this, that the school board just made it clear to him there was no more credibility left to be. And you couldn't, and there was not enough to bring back as well. And they've sort of forced his hand that way. Well, I think that was certainly part of the discussions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and we don't know what was said sure. specifically, but we know that they met for about 10 hours before they got to the point where they right. um, actually signed anything. Interestingly, if you look at the settlement that was signed, mm -hmm. um, Valentino's signature is actually on the settlement of, on a Sunday. It's dated Sunday the 30th. Uh, the board's signature is not dated until the 31st. Interesting. So I think this discussion had occurred, you know, as of Thursday when they met. Right. Um, and so, it, you know, I believe that they were probably trying to get to that, you know, what will it take to have him leave at this point. And, you know, at this point now we're seeing that there was a, there was a payout that was part of it. Um, a lot of people are having heartburn over that. But mm -hmm. I think the bottom line is the guy, you know, moved his whole family here mm -hmm. with the intent to start a new job. You know, he has a, a young child that's, that was starting school as well. It's a huge, um, you know, it's a huge move for a family. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not unusual to have somebody for, in that level of position to have some sort of a, a buyout. Um, I think it was a lot less than what buyouts that we've seen. Right. And so he got actually, the letter of recommendation, too. That and was, you I did get a letter pretty, of recommendation out mm -hmm. of it. So well, that's I, important. I tend to think the mm -hmm. letter of recommendation was uh, negotiating, just because this clearly is a negotiated settlement, that looks to me like a negotiating point that, that Valentino's people put forward or he put forward thinking that they wouldn't necessarily get it because all you really have to do and then the and then the board was like yeah we'll do that for you so all you really have to do is look them up online right and it, to see that that it's not as simple as that letter of recommendation might indicate mm -hmm. um, but that struck me as something that uh, that probably the board gave away on that gave away on that mm -hmm. in order to not have to spend quite so money there's a lot of heartburn out there so yeah. if you still stay with you on that mm -hmm. on the letter a lot of folks as it, as it was explained to me by somebody, the board as an elected body is an extension of the public, and they had heartburn with this letter because they feel like the community is actually writing a letter of recommendation. Uh, has anyone actually seen this letter? Yeah. That's right. That's yeah, right. Saw you yeah. saw it. Okay. So it's I'm true. curious to hear. So right, it's the basics, right? I mean, it's, right? Very, it's yeah. very brief. It's two. It's two to three paragraphs, if that. Um, and it, it basically just talks about the kind of. You know, I, I think it was written in the context of this is why we chose him to begin with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't address any of the issues. Okay. But I think Sophie's right. Anybody who Google's, and I think anybody should have, you know. 
We should what have should Googled have the other Google guy, Martinez, too. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but anybody who Googles Val Valentino and uh, APS, they're going to see a lot more information. I don't think it's as problematic as people are, are making it out to be. Yeah. And now the big boogeyman is the APS board, and right. so that's sort of taken a turn, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Rob, the other, the other Heartburn issue that Laura mentioned as well is the 80 GER, the 80 grand. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't think anybody would expect this man to go out the door after what Laura mentioned is moving your family, the whole thing. He's at a certain level in his life and his career where this is expected. But a lot of people have trouble with it, a real trouble with it. You know, talk about that. Oh, you know, yeah, that I think that's, that, that's the nub of the issue. Yeah. And, and the fact that this is not a one-off. Right. I mean, we've had right. uh, Mr. Allison a few years ago got about $300,000. you got Winston Brooks who got $350,000. Right. This guy's getting, well, he's getting $80,000, but he, his, technically his last day is October 1st. That's right. So he's getting about 100000 for a couple of months' good work, point. that's good pretty point. good work if you can get it. Yeah. And um, as you mentioned, it's uh, almost like uh, writing for a blog, right? Isn't that what you're making? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Very close I make a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah in, Every two in, months. In, yeah. In, uh, in in lira. <laughs> right. So, uh, but uh, th but I I I think now the focus is turning over to the school board. Right. And and mm -hmm. and the anger is being directed right. to them. That's and right. then uh, on Wednesday night, the school board itself lashed out at the public. Boy, they're not handling it well. That no. was not. They, they are crazy. not handling I mean, it well. I'll yeah. tell you a quick story. And, I mean, and when, and especially when you heard um, Donald Duran saying, "How dare you? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, second guess me." I mean, this is this is something that's been going on a lot. Mm -hmm. With, with with the school board, and they have to take some responsibility, mm -hmm. and they also have to take to take some of the hits. I'll tell you a quick story. When mm -hmm. I worked in Reno, Nevada, mm -hmm. there was a boxing referee there by the name of Mills Lane. You might remember, That's bald good, yeah, guy. Actually, I do. He was also a district attorney, and he was a very huh. good one. Huh. And when I lived in Reno, uh, Mills's phone number was in the phone book, in the public phone book. I said, why, you know, why do you have your phone number in the phone phone book where anyone can look it up? He says, Robbie. I'm an elected official. Now, if someone wants to call me up and call me a dumb son of a blank, they've got that right because oh. I'm an elected official. That comes with the territory. And that's what I would say to the APS. Wow. You know, I, 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 would yeah. say, I would say also that I, I think, you know, not that they're going to take any advice from me, but, mm -hmm. you know, the way that they're handling this, I think that, look, had this board stepped up and said, look, we did some things that didn't work out right. We don't agree with it. We're going to go forward. We apologize. Um, you have a right to take a pound of flesh, That's right. That's right. And, but we'll work together. Let's put a committee together. Let's get some focus groups. Mm -hmm. I think people would be singing their praises, but when you get in front of people and you know that you're the reason that people are angry, mm -hmm. whether you think you're guilty or not as an elected official is completely irrelevant in the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. They think you did it. Mm -hmm. And you start lashing out at them and you say things like, go ahead and recall us. I dare you. I dare you to recall us. Because if you recall us, you know who appoints the board? the Secretary of Education. And the reason I, I dun, find, dun, dun. yeah, well, <laughs> but there's, there's people, there's people that I've talked to in the last few days that cannot stand Hannah Scandera. They right. think she is, right. but they've said, I would rather have her running our school district than the school board we got now. And that shows you how this is, has, has I think been gifted. has a tremendous reminder, you know, as well. And I, and I haven't seen it so much in the media, but I've seen quite a bit of it on social media. Um, how few people vote Oh, you know, yeah. there are school board oh, school board members who are yeah. in. Well, that APS got like 496 than votes. votes. That's right. The one that just got like 496 votes. It, and, and so, the, this is high stakes for us. I mean, I would say we we look at our legislators, we look at our Congress people, and we think, oh, those are important positions. But they seem to have less power in our day to day lives, at least for parents mm -hmm. and teachers, less power in our day to day lives than the school board does. And nobody turns out for those school board elections. Mm -hmm. Well, so that does a real in, problem. That dovetails into the question about whether they should have the school board elections yes. tied to the municipal right. elections. Yes. That's right. That's right. Uh, you know, it, it takes a constitutional amendment. It's come all awfully close, maybe this will we'll put them over the top. The other thing it brings up too is, mm -hmm. this is a very large school district, mm -hmm. one of the largest in the mm -hmm. entire country. Right. And there's been talk about splitting the district in half, and I think that might be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Split it between east and west. I don't necessarily mean north and south, but mm -hmm. I think because, because of the poverty issue mm -hmm. between, on mm -hmm. north and south, but you split it between east and west, maybe you get a little competition in there right. where you can have like right. one, one district competing against another, and I think competition, from my free market perspective, is good. Yeah, well, there you look, go. Look at, look mm -hmm. at, look at, look at, go go at, go at the, the charter school, Cottonwood Classic. I mean, I, the, mm -hmm. 
I was on the board when we started the school, and it just was voted one of the top schools in the United States. It's a state charter school, not an APS charter school. Mm -hmm. They refuse to go the way of the APS charter school. And so amongst some of these things you're seeing out there where there's all this dismal, APS is a disaster, and I think it is on many levels, there's bright spots out there that I think Rob's right. If we found a way to narrow this down, you know, mm -hmm. there was an LFC hearing just a couple weeks ago, and, you know, they were grilling one of the APS guys that were like, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we thought you guys were focused on educating kids. You now have a police force. You have an insurance department. You have a claims right. department. You have a risk management. I mean, they start going through this list of things that they're doing. You mm -hmm. own school buses. Mm -hmm. I mean, you own a bus company. That's not what we thought you guys were going to do as a school district. Well, that's fair enough. This is sucking yeah. the air out of other educational news that's actually really important. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's important, and, and people have been doing this, to recognize that there are teachers who are doing great work, there are kids who are back to school. Tim Keller, our state auditor, has just announced that, that um, now I can't say the word, mm -hmm. <laughs> now I can't describe it, but by, by about a million dollars, our special, special education library. has been right. underfunded in the state. That's right. And that is a big story that is really right. not catching on. Not getting our federal it match, it's, yeah. it's a problem. Uh, Rachel Reedy is going to be assuming the position of interim superintendent. I, gotta, I have a question. Is there, this is a little off the mark maybe, is there a natural bias towards men when it comes to picking superintendents? in our district. There's something odd here, because when I read Raquel Reedy's background and how she came up through APS, she sounds, she sounds so fabulous. So she sounds fabulous. Well, I think more, you know. than, I think more mm -hmm. than a bias uh, towards men, um, and I do think we've had you know, proportionately more men as uh, superintendents, although I do remember one, I cannot remember her name right now, yeah. um, back in the early um, 2000s, but right. she didn't uh, last long. She didn't last long. Um, I think we have a bias against promoting people from within gotcha. and that's what we've seen and gotcha. that tends to be I think a bias across most school districts they really want somebody from the outside who's accomplished and right. I think there's you know there's a, there's some valid reasons for looking internally to try to promote someone from Surely within. Surely that's a but New Mexico the, problem. Right. Not just, I mean we, we think people from outside of New Mexico sure. are so much smarter than the people in New Mexico right. and, and, and I think it's wrong. Because yeah. you, I mean yeah. there's a lot of value um, in promoting some from some someone from within you won't have that issue that Valentino had that he you know admitted to where he doesn't know the politics he doesn't know the people clearly didn't understand and I think in particular this you know APS being that it's such a huge district as Rob described mm -hmm. I mean we also in New Mexico live in a fishbowl I mean the media is Report. very you know they they report on things very differently than they do in other cities and I think that has an effect on what happens and what people's perception are of the of the superintendent right so anybody who comes in from out of state I don't think in particular Valentino probably realized that it would be such a lightning rod position mm -hmm. because coming from other larger cities who you know cares you're, about the right you're a superintendent right. of a big school district that's people right. don't care about that they're reporting right. on other here your front page here everything. exactly that's a very that's a solid point I, Robbie made mention a little bit ago there's a, a turn possibly in how we look at elections and things. It seems to me this is an, a moment to capture as well, you know, the famous Rahm Emanuel quote, never let a crisis go on, you know, <laughs> right, go to waste. You know, is this the thing to kick forward some other thought about how not just the board elections, but the relationship with the superintendent and the board, the relationship with the superintendent and our community, just, a, and, you know, all the stuff we're talking about, internal uh, choices. Is this a moment here we can take advantage of? Yeah, yeah. and it's, it's a moment that's long overdue. Yeah. And let's hope that Ms. Reedy is uh, a, a good candidate and, right. a good, and does a good job. She certainly seems very, very smart. I mean, she's got a master's degree from yep. Harvard. She's mm -hmm. worked at APS since 1976. So she knows this area very well. So mm -hmm. let's keep our fingers crossed that maybe we can get. You no, know, it was really interesting yeah. to see that her yeah, announcement. What her announcement was, they announced it, and the next day she was in schools. Right, she was out mm -hmm. in meeting the schools, people, principals, meeting people, principals, right. students, welcoming kids back to that's school. Right. And I think that's a that's a step in the right direction. Right, glad you got that in. Up next, the line discusses charges filed recently against New Mexico Secretary of State Diana Duran.